Hey, good evening, Overlanders. My name is Rick, and this is Left Coast Overland. Thanks for tuning in. If you caught my last video about, <clears throat> pardon me, the uh, the longevity of the propane tank, I kind of got another idea. I'll do the longevity of the house battery. So it is currently 6 p.m. All right, and what I'm gonna do is uh, I've set everything up, right? Uh, I turned off the fridge on my way back from Malibu today, so it hadn't been running. It is cooling. Um, it is running on propane. You can see that it says auto and gas, so I can hear the fan going there, and I'm running it on four right now, which is, I feel like, a pretty, you know, moderate a level of cooling. Um, I have purchased some more groceries for this week, so there are uh, some steaks and some other perishables, some salads and some cheese and stuff, a little bit of fruit. So um, what I want to do is run it on just the house battery um, and just kind of see like with normal use. So I'm listening to the radio and uh, I'm also going to be running the turbo fan in a little while, which is great. I can kind of kick it on and cool down the, the area as needed. Um, and then I'll be running a few lights, but it's going to be run specifically off of the house battery, not the truck battery. So in order to achieve that, I will be unplugging the, was that nine pin? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven pin connector from the truck. So the truck battery is not gonna be charging the system at all. And I wanna see how many days you can hear the fan in there running. How many days of, you know, off grid you can expect out of the one house battery. I'll show you that right now. So inside of there is the battery box. I don't really wanna peel it all apart cause it's kind of a pain. It's real tight in here. Um, it's like, uh, it's shoot, I can't remember. Lifeline or something like that. One of those sealed um, gel type acid batteries, kind of like a, an Optima, but better. Um, it's very similar to Concord batteries. Better. I think it's called Lifeline. I remember I posted a video about uh, ooh, last November or December when I first bought it and installed it. Um, and it's been great. So. That's the goal of this video. It's going to be a two or three day process. Um, over the, the weekend with my wife and I, we were doing kind of the same thing. I just didn't film it. And uh, it lasted uh, two overnights on that Malibu trip. But I kind of want to stretch the legs a little bit. Um, this Jensen radio, kind of like what happens is uh, when you have everything going all at once. So like you have the 12 volt water system and the heater for the water and everything going it it drains a lot of battery power it, it requires a lot so what will happen is you'll be listening to the radio and then you go to turn on the water faucet and all of a sudden the radio pauses for a second and you're like i'm draining too much of the system or if you have the turbo fan on high you can't listen to the radio at the same time so throwing in the mix of now running the refrigerator um, and then uh, I still have a lot of water left in my fresh water tank from my weekend trip. We didn't use very much. It's a 15 gallon reservoir and we probably used like three gallons. Um, so I'm going to be using the, the water that's in it for the next week while I'm here uh, parked for work. And then, you know, I'll, I'll continually kind of do updates in the afternoons and evenings when I have the opportunity to, and then I'll piece it all together into a video that you are now watching uh, that's all posted together. So this is 6 p.m. on Sunday night, night one, um, and we'll see you know, how long I can run this battery until it's just flat, I guess. Um, but the truck drove, I drove back from Malibu to the location I am in now. So I drove for like a good solid two hours um, and everything's all freshly charged. I was looking on the uh, readout for the 
ammeter on the truck and it was reading 13.8 volts down from 14.2 earlier today when we first pulled out. So that means in my mind that the system has recharged itself, uh, both the truck and the house battery and the camper. So come along with me, we'll see how this little experiment works out. Hopefully it doesn't kill my battery. It does have a warranty, which is good. Uh, it's made here locally. Um, so American made products and I got it as like a factory second. So it was a blemish because the factory is not very far from my local batteries unlimited dealer. And uh, they gave me a great price. Uh, this is not a sales pitch. I don't work for Lifeline Batteries, but uh, so far it's been great. I think I've gotten it flat at least once, like dead flat, zero juice in it. I plugged into shore power. Um, it was when I did my Haiti trip, like uh, back in March. Uh, there's a video about that. I'll post it here. Anyways, uh, I forgot to turn something off. I think perhaps my water pump or something and it, or whatever it was, it just, I was gone for a long time and it just solidly drained the battery to zero. Like I said, plugged it into shore power, brought it all the way back up, been running top notch ever since. And then, um, another time. Oh yeah. So I took the camper off the truck, right? And the camper had been sitting at home for, from July through October. Uh, so almost four months. And, uh, I think I plugged it into shore power once like a month ago before I put this back together again and, uh, kind of gave it the opportunity to boost the system up a little bit. And, uh, you know, so I didn't wind up where I was going with a flat battery, but, um, so far, so good. I have an Optima battery in my Jeep. I love it. This one in here is a little bit bigger because uh, it's a house battery and I believe it's 12 volt. I don't think it's 24. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm rambling, but I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Same time, same channel, and uh, we'll see how everything's cranking. Thanks. Good afternoon, Overlanders. It's Monday and I got a sweet pickup flight to Catalina. So dropping off some passengers, going back to the mainland, picking up some more, coming on back. Not a bad day. I love coming out here. It's beautiful. So they call this place the airport in the sky, hashtag airport in the sky. You see that over there in the cantina. It's a cool place, man. Everybody really likes coming out here. Uh, it's easy to get to from LA, 27 miles across the sea. Catalina's waiting for me. But um, yeah, just thought I'd throw this little clip in with the rest of this video. Kind of a, a fun little Easter egg for the day. This is why they call it the airport in the sky, because you're surrounded by water. So it's like, oh, it's pretty cool. Good evening, Overlanders. It is day two. I uh, just got back from my little Catalina excursion. It is currently 6.30 p.m. on Monday. So full 24 hours has passed and the system has been running. Um, it is on gas and at four. Let's see how the perishables did. Ooh, feels nice and cold. Cheese is good. Salads are good. Everything's still really nice and cold. Um, so, so far, so good. First 24 hours, no issues. Uh, I haven't turned on the radio yet. I'm still in my work clothes. I'm gonna change out. It's been a long day. Maybe make some dinner and then go from there. But uh, yep, I'll uh, catch you guys tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. So uh, as I was cooking dinner, the uh, radio shut down, I'm running two lights. So let's see what happens if I, oh, yep. So two lights was too much with the fan and the fridge and everything else. So one light. It doesn't even want to turn on with one light. It just kind of, it has the clock, but I don't know. And then let's see, uh, draw a second light. 
Yep, still not enough. So I'm running the fan on setting one. Just to cool it off, it's been really hot here and I'm sure that drew a lot of power through the day as the fridge was running. But uh, yeah, I think it's to be, yep, to be expected. So with the fan running and the fridge, it was just too much. But the fan off, the light on, and the uh, freezer, or sorry, radio going is fine. So. It's a house battery, it's one 12 volt battery. And like I said, the fridge has been running constantly for 24 hours and it's been very hot, so it's absolutely running constantly. Oh well. Let's see how long we can drive this thing until the wheels fall off. 6.30, bright and early. Still cranking. Uh, so today is day three. Tuesday. <sighs> All right, let's see in a little bit. back it's 5 45 it's almost 6 p.m and everything's still humming along it's pretty warm here i'm gonna leave uh, the screen door open but i'm going to grab my trot tip take it over to the barbecue and throw it on cook some dinner while i continue to work day three still cruising along Wednesday morning I woke up to up oh, there it goes just kicked off I woke up to this uh, system clicking I heard click 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 and uh, and then all this light panel was not lit up so I came over the on button still in the on position reset it so it's got enough juice to know that it needs to turn on as far as the battery goes, but it's probably not enough juice to keep it running. So let's see if it tries again. Yep, it just kicks itself off. It's still plenty cold in here. Like you could probably, I won't stretch it. I'm gonna put this stuff into a, a normal refrigerator, but. Uh, so the lights still click on and everything. There's still enough juice in the battery probably for another couple days worth of use. Uh, just not enough juice to run the, the cooler or the fridge anymore. Um, so it's been, let's see, I turned it on at 6 p.m. on Sunday. So 6 p.m. Monday would be 24 hours, 6 p.m. Tuesday would be 48 hours. Uh, 48 plus 12, 13, 14, like 60 hours, 62 hours of, uh, run time on the house battery without recharging the system. Uh, so I could say, you know, you safely get three days out of it, give or take, uh, depending on how hot it is. It's been really hot here, so it's been running continuously through the day, um, you know, you probably get three days. So if you're like moving from place to place every two days, you're golden. That thing will last you, like I said in the last video, three weeks. Um, on your third day, you should think about moving so that you can recharge the system, you know, so drive for at least an hour, maybe two to boost the batteries back up. Uh, it would probably run at least another day if I was still plugged into the truck, but I wanted to test this on just this particular house battery. So, um, yeah, let's go with three days. 
without any recharge on the house battery. Pretty good little experiment. Uh, I'm curious what a solar panel would do. I think I have one kicking around here at the hangar. I'll try and dig that up. It's a, a battery tender one. It's already got a charge controller on it. It's, it's a monocrystalline hard solar panel. I think it's a hundred watt. I'd have to look at the box. I remember buying it for one of the trailers last summer to keep it going. Uh, I wonder if plugging that into the ports on the outside, uh, just using the alligator clips and then popping it on this, the roof of the Palomino, just so that it's constantly picking up sun through the day, um, it probably would extend the battery life uh, another few days. But I cannot say definitively because I have not yet tested it. So uh, that's another test for another day. But uh, right now, I'm going to uh, take care of some stuff for the morning. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please put them down in the uh, comment box. And let me know if you want me to kind of perform any more of these practical use tests on the system. This one worked really well uh, because I was stationary and parked for a few hours, or sorry, a few days uh, to where I could perform the test. And also, you know, it's no skin off my back. I can take the perishables out and put them into the work refrigerator. Um, typically I don't use this fridge when I'm parked here at work because I have a refrigerator and a kitchen, but I felt for sake of science, I would, uh, try it out since it was already kind of cold from my last weekend trip. Um, the next thing to do is to take everything out and then air it out. So if you guys are new to this game, I leave a towel in the little flap for the freezer to let that air out, you know, and then I leave another towel wedged in between the door and the frame of the entire system. And that lets it air out as well. Otherwise it will get funky in there. So don't let your fridge get funky because that's gross and nobody wants a gross fridge. But that's it for today. And uh, we'll try a new experiment tomorrow, maybe. All right. See you later, Overlanders. Thanks.